Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today we are going to do a comparison between two different things. That is, we are going to see the life of a PhD in India and USA. That's what we are going to compare today. So we are going to see the life of a PhD in India and USA. The true picture and the risk-benefit ratio is going to be revealed today in this video. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. So the first point that we're going to talk about is the responsibilities, right? So as compared to India and USA, what are the responsibilities of a PhD student? So in India, uh, the PhD students, they juggle between multiple responsibilities. They have to do teaching. They have to do mentoring for students, for UG and PG students. Uh, you might have a class that you have to take or you might have to assist uh, the teachers or the faculties or professors who are taking uh, a class there, right? That could be one of your... Uh, um, you know, a part of your curriculum or it could be mentoring as well. So you might have to mentor and guide a few UG and PG students in their project work and you should be a part of their uh, research work as well. And thirdly, there could also be lab assistance. That is um, for UG or PG students, whenever they have a lab uh, associated with their curriculum and you are being assigned to that lab, then you will have to go and assist the students and the professors out there, right? So these could be a few of your... Um, responsibilities apart from the research work that you do right so that that is in case of India but in the case of USA uh, the students are mostly expected to focus on their research work so they will be teaching and they'll be mentoring as well for them but uh, the you know the importance given to them will be quite less the responsibilities might be less as compared uh, with India so in India we uh, you know the students will have to juggle with multiple responsibilities as compared with the USA Right. So that is the first point. That is the responsibilities. The second point is the funding opportunities. So how does the funding opportunities in USA look like? How does it look in India? So in general, uh, it, in USA, we can see that the, you know, the funding opportunities are very abundant and it is very diverse as compared to India. And in India, there are limited options and there are a lot of takers for that option. So uh, only when uh, your work is competitive enough, uh, only when the, it is, um, you know, it is seen with enough uh, credibility only then you will get the funding opportunity in India only when you apply and you follow all the procedures that is given. Uh, so the options are limited and, um, you know, the, the opportunities are also limited in case of India for funding opportunities as compared to USA, right? So that is with the next point. The third point is about job uh, prospects, especially after you complete your PhD, how does the job opportunities in India and in USA, how does it look like? So first and foremost, yes, there are uh, better opportunities, job opportunities for uh, people who finish their PhD in USA. Uh, it could be both for uh, postdoctoral research. It could be for any academic positions if you want to take up um, as uh, after you complete your PhD, uh, if it's you want to enter up your teaching job or a professor or an associate professor, or you want to get into postdoctoral research, uh, or even if you want to enter into to industry after finishing your uh, PhD in USA, the opportunities are better uh, in USA as compared to India. So that is the third point that I wanted to talk about. The fourth point that we have in our, um, you know, in our video today is about the research infrastructure, right? So how does the uh, infrastructure and how does, how does the resources look like in India and in USA? So yes, the resources uh, and the research infrastructure available uh, to USA st uh, students are more advanced and more sophisticated as compared to India. So uh, the research, uh, the you know, the amount of resource that is put uh, in research in India is 
less as compared to USA. The, so the US spends uh, quite a bit of their uh, GDP into the research activity, into improving their research infrastructure. And they had started uh, long back. They had started this uh, building their infrastructure, research infrastructure long back. So right now they are well established and a lot of importance is given to research as compared to India. So in India, the amount that is spent in research is not up to that level. And we have started very late in our uh, uh, you know, infrastructure development or research development itself. So we have not come to that point yet. So yes, uh, the resources and the research infrastructure at USA is far better than India. So that is the fourth point. The fifth point that I wanted to talk about is the PhD curriculum itself. So in USA, the uh, PhD curriculum is better structured and standardized uh, out there because uh, you have a prescribed, uh, you know, um, uh, options to choose your curriculum, to choose your coursework, uh, you know, when you have to finish um, the meetings. Uh, so all of that is very much structured and it is standardized in USA. The guidance and the support that you'll get from the advisors is also very, um, you know, very uh, straightforward and it's very structured. So that way the curriculum, uh, you know the curriculum before you enter the 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 course itself but in India it is not very much structured and it depends on university to university from lab to lab as well so it might not be as structured as it seems to be in uh, USA so that is one thing and even the advices um, so you do get good advice uh, and good uh, guidance from uh, the advices at India but it is not uh, up to the level of USA right so that is with respect to the PhD curriculum next moving on to the sixth point that is collaboration so the collaboration uh, if you have to talk about collaboration as as in uh, if your work involves um, you know collaborating with other team other universities or even other countries then how are the opportunities available at USA and how is it in India that's what we're going to see so the PhD students in USA have more opportunities to collaborate with researchers from other institutions as well as countries so you can see that in USA the opportunities are very diverse because everybody out there are open for collaboration but in India it's quite restricted uh, so only a few handful of people try to collaborate with other interdisciplinary fields uh, whereas in USA it's a very common approach so this gives more uh, diversification with your research and more uh, opportunities more doors open uh, open up for your uh, job as well as for your research career right so that way uh, for collaboration USA is uh, better as compared to India Next, the seventh point that I wanted to talk about is conferences. So attending conferences and presenting your work at conferences. So all of this is a very critical part of your PhD life. Uh, so with respect to USA and India, how does it differ? So in USA, there is a lot of importance given to these conferences and the students will have more opportunity as well. And apart from that, there's also funding, um, you know, opportunities are available for travel and accommodation for these conferences. So if at all you're going to a different place for these conferences it could be a different country as well uh, the travel and uh, the accommodation all of that uh, will be taken care by a few funding agencies who are specifically there for uh, research right so you can apply to these funding and get it so it is there in India as well but uh, the opportunities are not quite good so it is coming up now so but in USA it is very very common for uh, students to go and attend the conferences present their papers and their research work at conferences and get funding for all of these so it's very common uh, in USA and uh, you know they can attend and they can present their work over there so this helps in better networking so as a PhD student as a PhD graduate right networking is very important it, it's a very, very big uh, part of the PhD life so this is one such opportunity that will help you with uh, to network with a lot of other people uh, new people in the industry or people who are also doing research as you are doing so it helps in better networking and this can also lead to more collaborations right so in USA the opportunities for all of this is quite high as compared to India. Next, the eighth point I wanted to talk about is the duration. That is the duration of the uh, PhD course itself. So, 
in uh, USA, right? The PhD program in the USA is typically longer as compared to India. So the averagely, uh, on an average, it takes around four to five years to complete PhD in USA. Uh, so generally, PhD is for three years. Uh, so the general PhD, uh, but in in India, uh, there is a possibility for you to complete it within that particular uh, time, uh, given your advisor, the university that you're working in, and how fast you're able to, uh, you know, uh, do your research work and publish papers, uh, finish your curriculum, etc. But in case of USA, it typically takes longer. It might take longer than four to five years also. So that is uh, with respect to the duration of PhD program in India and in USA. Right. So the ninth point I wanted to talk to you all. About about is the expectation that is what is expected out of a PhD student in US and in India that's what we are going to see so first and foremost um, the curriculum the course curriculum and the research vigor it differs uh, in both USA and in India and it's not just these two countries but also the universities that you are uh, doing a PhD in whether it's university or whether it's a garment lab so the research vigor differs right so you won't see the same thing in two different universities so and the expectation from a PhD student or a PhD research scholar from the university is also different so especially in India if you see the paper publication is a mandatory uh, so both paper it could be research paper or review paper so before uh, you finish your PhD thesis before you can give your oral uh, defense viva you have a mandatory requirement to publish papers right in most of the universities this is there so this is in case of India but in the case of USA uh, there is freedom for the scholar that is given so although uh, it is regarded as really good for you to publish papers even in USA as well but it's not a mandatory thing so you might be in the process of publication so that is also accepted in the case of USA but in India there is a uh, you know, mandatory uh, requirement for uh, the paper to be published before you can give your defense viva Right, so that is with respect to the uh, expectations that is there from a PhD student. The tenth point that I wanted to talk to you all about is the individual perspective. Now, we have seen a lot of points about about what are the different uh, risks and what is the benefit that is there uh, if you are going to do. PhD in India and at USA, the most important of all uh, of these considerations is the individual perspective, right? So what is uh, that you as an individual want to do, uh, want out of a PhD, right? So that is very important. So it depends uh, from the risk benefit ratio, it depends on an individual's goal on the interest and the resources available with that particular individual, right? So if at all you want to value the job opportunities and you want a better infrastructure for your PhD life, then yes, you can choose USA. But if you want the flexibility and autonomy when you're doing your PhD and uh, for your job as well, then you can choose India, right? So the, these are the different, um, you know, points that I wanted to discuss with you uh, regarding the life of a PhD scholar or a PhD in India and in USA. I'm sure this video was super helpful for everybody out there who are confused about, you know, which side to turn and which, which uh, option to choose. I'm sure this was super helpful. If you have any more doubts, let us know in the comment section below. We're very happy to help you out. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.